Hi everybody, CyberRiff here. I just want to do a, a quick video on an interesting topic which is Canaan, Phoenicia, Israel, is Africa. And if you look at this article here, an interesting article from Black History in the Bible website, and it reads, the geographic area currently known as Israel was originally known in the Bible as Canaan, but known as Phoenicia later. That's important. Because a lot of um, professed Christians and people of religions and denominations from Adventist to Catholic, Presbyterian, Evangelical, etc. They need to look at the history. They need to understand and read and research the history of Israel. And it says here again, I'm going to read it again. It says, the geographic area currently known as Israel was originally known in the Bible as Canaan, but known as Phoenicia later. The area was named after a mythical curse of Ham. And it doesn't read that, but I'm saying that. Because that is where it eventually he eventually settled after leaving Africa. Now I've changed what that reads because Canaan is actually in Africa. Okay? That's going to take another video, and there's other videos on YouTube that covers that in depth. But I want to show you that Canaan is Africa. Okay? Now, when it comes to the 12 tribes of Israel, and I've said in previous videos that Israel was created in what year? 1948. So if Israel was created in 1948, how can Israel be in Exodus and Genesis and throughout the Bible? That doesn't make any sense. So Israel was really Yisrael, Rael, not Israel of the El God. That's another piece of research that you need to look at, the L God. And what does the L God mean? And how is the L God attached to Israel of 1948, which Israel is man-made. It's man-made of the United Nations in 1948, okay? So the tribes of Canaan which they claim of the Bible of Genesis and Exodus. And they have the list here of the Jesubites, the Amorites, Gigasites, Hivites, and all these tribes. Now what country, even today, predominantly throughout history, has tribes? This is not a Western phenomenon. Originality. Tribes are of what country or countries? Africa. And I'm an Indian. Okay? This is why Canaan is in Africa. One example. When it comes to also Moses and Joshua... 
there is no Moses and there is no Joshua because again Canaan is in Africa now just in case someone decides to be an opera there's an article here that says Moses never existed Exodus never happened scholars agree scholars agree and the article reads Moses never existed Exodus never happened scholars agree the main book of Judaism called the Torah the first five books of the Old Testament is filled with stories of persecution of a people what people and this is also something that you need to delve into dig deep research because the people that they mention people are people of Africa who are Africans okay and they they call them Israelites when really they're Yisra Ra lights not Israel lights Israel God lights of Israel man-made Israel of 1948 they Yisrael and who worshipped the original creator Ra Re Ra and just in case someone says I don't believe in Ra Pray has Ra in the middle. Praise has Ra in the middle. Okay? So, it says here that Israelites by an unnamed Egyptian pharaoh. You notice that? Unnamed Egyptian pharaoh. There is no pharaoh who was royal and royalty, ruler, king, with no name. In fact, you have a long list of names, okay? And it says here, who allegedly enslaved them and their leader Moses. The narratives, the plot... The deception, the lies, the enslavement has to stop, it has to cease. And then they claim who led them out of Egypt when Egypt was known as Kemet. So Kemet is Africa. Egypt has to be Africa. In a mass exodus, there was no exodus, okay? As the title says, Moses never existed, exodus never happened, scholars agree. Scholars agree. And I'm repeating myself deliberately to show you it takes research, years of research, decades of research, in order to grasp what is true and what is false. Another point I just want to put, mention is that the earth is not 6,000 years old. And it says written records and archaeological evidence using carbon dating sh shows man's presence tens of thousands of years ago Probably over what? 100,000 years ago. 100,000. So imagine if the, and I've covered this in my previous videos, that the oldest human DNA is of the Khoisan people. The Khoisan people of South Africa. Namibia. 
and you've just read this article here with me saying that it shows man's presence tens of thousands of years ago, probably over 100,000 years. So if you look at any biblical artifact, the hieroglyphs, they have to be easily 100,000 years ago or more. That's another interesting fact and point that one should consider. I want to also just deal with the word Lord. Because in the Bible you'll see the word Lord throughout the Bible. And that is also a plot and false narrative which really is when you do the research, you'll find out that that's pointing towards the El God, the Lord El God of the Khazar Jews, not the original Hebrew, Ethiopic language and creation of languages out of Africa. And it says here that the Lord... If you look for the origin of where the word Lord comes from, it says, Master of household, ruler. <laughs> I'm laughing because it sounds so deliberate. Master of a household, ruler, feudal lord, superior husband, also God. Translating Latin, Dominus. Greek, Kyrios in the New Testament, Hebrew, Yahweh, linked again to Jews and man-made Israel, replacing Africa, Yisrael. And it says here is a contradiction of earlier Hillowed, literally one who guards the loaves from, looks like half bread, loaf, loaf, weird, keeper, guardian. Sounds like to watch over the loaf. Compare lady, literally bread kneader, Old English. Household servant, literally loaf eater. See? So it's got more to do with bread and a loaf of bread and watching over a loaf of bread than it has to do with any royalty, king, creator, bara, creator. Okay? There's another point. Also, when you look at Canaan, Interesting article, Ancient Man and His First Civilizations, Canaan 2. It says, in Canaan, like elsewhere in the region, the people went on to develop an advanced, advanced civilization. Advanced civilization. Not slaves, not hunters, not... Even though they, of course, you've got to hunt for food. Of course, just like people go, for, go fishing, people... Um, eat meat and slaughter animals etc not that they slaughtered animals but they were more towards the vegetarian side of things I would think but it just shows the point is that one has to still hunt to eat and fish to eat and he says they lived in large cities not small huts not small villages Large cities with what? Magnificent palaces and temples. Magnificent palaces and temples. So when you read your Bible, the next time you read through your Bible and you see this, this, this sort of um, stiff-necked, hard-hearted um, people being evil and, and worshipping 
f false gods and all of this stuff. It doesn't sound like that, does it? When you read history. They lived in large cities with magnific magnificent palaces and temples. They had writing, mathematics and a calendar. They also became great artisans creating beautiful works of art. The main cities of Canaan, which is now today Israel, and Canaan was where? Africa, because we're talking about the people of Africa. Where Jericho, Ugarit, Tyre, Sidon, Ebla, Biblos, all the way to Jerusalem and later the North African, North African Phoenician settlement of Carthage. Okay, now, I don't want to make this video too long. And it says, like all other ancient societies, the Canaanites had many gods. Now, let me explain that. The reason why they had many gods and goddesses and anyone who worships the creator and the universal kingdom of Ra, the creator, the original name of the creator, Ra. The same way you have praise, Ra in the middle of praise, Ra in the middle of pray. And I could go on, but I don't want to make this video too long. It then says that, but their main gods were El. That's not true. I'll tell you why. Because in this article, what they're trying to do, and it says, and it's on Baal, with El being the supreme god. That's not true either. What they're trying to do in this article is actually mix. And let me just point it out. They're trying to mix African Phoenician settlement, right? They put the word in African here, which in your Bible, you don't see too often the word African. Probably never Af in your Bible or any Bible version. African and Africa. So they've put it here in order for them to connect Africa to the modern El, God of Israel, man-made Israel of 1948, when it is Yisra'el of Africa, okay? You see, they're trying to, they've got to, they've got to copy these images of gods and goddesses. This is, this is, this is what they're doing, okay? You see that? And you can look at this image of a god, L, and this image here, and you know straight away that's nothing to do with Africa. Because it's more, their gods and goddesses are far more elaborate, far more beautified, large. That's why when it comes to pyramids, the creator is smart. In putting it in such stone, they cannot demolish it or even fathom to rebuild or replicate it. Okay? Now look at this. It says here, Egyptian memorial stone of a mercenary Levantine soldier, which it's not a Levantine soldier. <laughs> look at it. Okay? This is an African Kemet, Egyptian, who's created a straw, a jar, or a bottle, furniture, okay? And he's drinking out of the straw beer. So he's created beer. He's created the first bar or pub or McDonald's straw. Yeah, see that? And straws that people use to drink. 
very interesting. Okay, let me just kind of blow that up a little bit more so you can see. Oh, let's go a little bit more. Now look at this. This is innovation. Here he has a spear right here. Or it could be just, you know, the carvings of a spear for the back of the chair. But to see a straw, a bottle, chair, furniture, and not be mentioned for innovation, not be mentioned for creativity, but only known for being a slave or being black or being whatever other label religions and denominations and politics want to describe you or historians, fake historians. And this is a bigger picture of it right here. And right here is the alphabet and languages. Yeah. So you can see they're enjoying themselves and they were very intelligent people of Africa as Africans in biblical times and biblical history. Okay? Then, like I said to you, they're trying to create the, connect the Africa to now the Bronze Age, the Phoenician Age. You see here? It says the figurine was found in a tomb, probably a Phoenician manufacturer. You see, so the, the competition is they've got to try and date theirs before this. Okay, to say that they have been the innovators and creators of all things. Here, again, you see here, they've got the food, but then, you know, they've got the jewelry, they've got the fish, the hunting, etc. But they look down upon things like that, as if to say, but they don't look down on people who go fishing today. They don't look down on people who do game, hunting, shooting. They, they don't look down at that. And also, if you look at the history of Africa, Africa has never invaded anyone as big and large as it is, and powerful as it is, and has always been. These are things you need to consider. If you want to be a truth seeker and you want the truth and nothing but the truth, you've got to do the research. Got to do the research, okay? Now, I want to look at this, the history of the Phoenician and Canaanites. And this is another article here. And it says, the Phoenician... Of the what? Iron Age, first millennium, descended from the original Canaanites who dwelt in the region during the early Bronze Age. And it has the dates, etc. Okay? Now, the Bronze Age is the Phoenician Age that overpowered pretty much and made the changes towards Africa. Because the Iron Age is more the Vikings, Westerns, influence that Africans weren't known for manufacturing steel. And I want to close this video by saying it was the manufacturing of steel and guns and bullets that brought down the entire Kemet, Egypt, Nubia, Zulu, Aborigine, Red Indian tribes and people worldwide. 
without the invention of guns and bullets, the Iron Age and spears etc even though Africans use spears for hunting but the spears of the Iron Age and the guns and ammunition of the Iron Age and if you look at steel it's mainly Western countries that produce and manufacture steel so it was the steel and the guns and the ammunition that gave them the advantage in order for them to conquer and if you look at the, the, the Zulu tribe and, and, and watch the final battle of the Zulu, you will see exactly what I'm saying. For over 10 years, I've been trying to work out and fathom what brought down the great dynasties or dynasties of Africa. How could the creator just allow this demise? What did they do wrong? And in fact, they didn't do anything wrong. Even though the Bible and the narratives of the Bibles and Bible versions that are man-made Bible versions completely want to create an exodus and create a curse of Ham and create all these other curses and all these other derogatories without giving them credit for a straw and beer or pottery when you've got the museums of England and the Vatican full of artifacts you've got Gold tombs, pyramids of, that are colossal and still no credit, no mention in the Bible of, of intelligence, wisdom, knowledge, understanding, spirituality of the cosmos, of the calendar and the planetary systems that they've actually taken and copied and changed and altered to their to their gods and their false images and false gods down to the point of Constantine and Christianity and the Roman Emperor or Empire copied from the dynasties of Africa I want you to um, ponder these things and to be a truth seeker because if you're looking to eternal life and you're looking to the afterlife you have to have truth you have to um, know and be able to balance what is truth and what is error. Now let me just end by saying this. Let me share this article with you. In case you're thinking I'm just bashing without facts. This is articles, says excerpts from Sutherland's Disciples of Destruction and Constantine, page 123 to 129. It says here, a valuable discussion by a non-believer about Constantine's influence upon Christianity. And this is by a non-believer. Which believers should, should actually do this research. And read what a non-believer has found. And if you're a believer of Christianity, you should understand that Constantine created Christianity. Okay? understand that research Constantine research what he believed and it says here a valuable discussion by a non-believer about Constantine's influence upon Christianity is six pages in Charles W. Sutherland's book Disciples of Destruction okay 1987 one 
Constantine had political reasons for changing Christianity to be more comparable or comparable to pagan solar religions, right? Constantine claimed inspiration from God and Christians let him make decisions over the faith. Constantine changed the birthday of Christ from January 6th. Did you know that? To December 25th to line up with the solar religion of Rome whose god Sol Invictus had December 25th as his birthday. Constantine changed Passover celebration of the resurrection to name Easter. The Easter egg. Constantine enforced the view of equality. Comes sub Substantiality between Jesus and the Father to ensure the victory of these points. All earlier manuscripts of the New Testament were destroyed and a new Bible commissioned. Here are a few excerpts of the above six pages, right? And it says here that Constantine is one of the most important figures in Christianity because he gave the young religion the form it would hold for 1500 years. Now I just, he says 1500 years, right? That's pretty much how long Christianity is, right? How old Christianity is. And in the early, early article, we're mentioning the oldest human DNA that spans 100,000 years or more, okay? Probably be even more than that because the, the earth is what, around 5 billion years old? We haven't got the time to read everything. But it's important that we do research, that we read, regardless of what religion you think you belong to, you must read. And I'm going to close here by just one article that says most human DNA traced to single exodus from what? Africa. A long ago. Over 100,000 years old. New York. Genetic ancestry of people living outside of Africa can be traced almost completely to a single exodus of humans from that continent long ago, new studies suggest. Still a tiny legacy from an earlier exit may persist in some native islanders in the southern western Pacific Ocean. Now... The reason why they mentioned that Pacific Ocean sort of thing is because I'm an Indian and Africa are all one people. They all come from the same root. And every other country, language and people, Chinese, Australian, whatever you want to call it, Aborigine, Caribbean, is actually, I'm, a, I'm Indian, is Caribbean, okay? Latin America, you know, Colombia, Brazil. Cuba, all root is Africa. And he said the New York, the new work takes advantage of the fact that human DNA accumulates tiny changes over time. This can be used like a clock to estimate how long ago two populations split from each other. The approach can't reveal every migration out of Africa just those that left a genetic legacy that have been handed down to this day. Scientists have long traced one such exit to a single population that left around 40,000 to 80,000 years ago. Do you notice that? 40,000 to 80,000 years ago. And yet, the other article said 100,000 years ago. Probably over time rather than all at once, but some other work has turned potential signs of a previous, previous migration Migration as early as what 120,000 to 130,000 years ago. Now, I am working on putting all this information together so that people can have the resource enabled to research, study, learn, 
to show yourself approved unto good works. To understand that the man-made versions of the Bible are not accurate. To understand the narratives of most man-made Bible versions are not accurate. To understand that the oldest human DNA on planet Earth is of Africa. All things, inventions, mathematics, language, alphabet, architecture uh, is Africa. And please understand the enslavement. Understand my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. If you're on YouTube, please comment. If you're on any other social media platform, please share, like, subscribe. Thank you for listening. Cyberif.